Yum, yum! Hey guys, this is Jason Alkash from Pixel Fondue, and uh, today we're going to continue our series uh, working on the hexagon grid and the procedural operations inside of Moto. And I want to show you kind of what the next step is. Um, in this case, I have a toroid here. You'll notice that uh, for some reason my hexagons are now uh, covering my toroid shape right here. Uh, we're going to go over how do we do that. Um, obviously, there's still some cool things we can do uh, with this, but um, all the tools that we've built here are still relevant uh, in terms of what it can do. And I just want to make sure that we cover some of these options and, and see what kind of fun stuff you guys can build with these kinds of things and even cover real world uh, examples. So uh, that being said, let's get going. So to get started in continuation of this, uh, we're going to do a few steps to get going. Uh, right now we have the hexagon on a flat plane. What we'd like to do is wrap this around a, another mesh that has uh, potentially a UV map uh, or a pattern. And obviously in this case we're going to use a very simple object, so we're going to use a toroid just to see what that looks like uh, generally. And we're going to move this out of the way just ever so slightly. Um, obviously when you create a primitive, uh, a cube, whatever, uh, you do create a toroid here uh, and you get a UV map, it's called under texture, and that's great. Actually we'll be using that to, to, uh, to modulate what the actual hexagons are going to be wrapping around. Uh, to do that, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to grab hexagon over here, uh, add operator, and select UV map uh, or UV transform, double click. It's going to ask me for two things. What's the target mesh? In our case, it's the toroid. And what's the target UV map? And that's the texture uh, UV map that was created by default. Press OK. You can't see much. But if you hide the toroid itself, you'll notice that, oh, hey, look, the hexagons, there's not a lot of them but they are uh, wrapping around. Um, obviously to remedy that, we can grab this uh, slider for the scale and just kind of decrease the scale and get a lot more hexagons. And uh, now you can see, oh, that looks pretty darn good. Now, um, if you wanna see what's happening, obviously I can go back to the hexagon uh, mesh here and just hide the UV transform. You'll notice that's basically what's happening. It's transforming that zero to one space onto the hexagon and uh, it's wrapping it around depending on what the UV map is. If you want to see what the UV map is um, in 3D space and you just kind of get a visual of it, uh, what I like to do is grab the toroid and most 3D applications allow you to do this, is grab a mesh and convert the UVs to mesh. And I like to call this toro toroid uh, UV guide and obviously use the UV map that I've uh, selected. And you can have multiple UV maps and multiple guides and kind of switch between one and the other. But uh, that is the UV map that we had for the toroid. And basically that's how it maps to, so if I turn off the UV transform, here's my grid overlaid on top of the UV map, um, which is pretty helpful sometimes. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Now I do want to tell you about a little um, uh, issue that does happen sometimes. Uh, if I select this and I'm going to uh, increase the size just slightly, you'll notice sometimes things kind of have these spiky little polygons and what's happening is that it's kind of fighting over between the 3D space and the 2D uh, UV map and typically um, the way I solve it is I actually try to make the that uh, that box we're doing the boolean operation on a tiny bit smaller uh, but in this case there's another thing that could also help is that you don't really need the toroid to be uh, sub uh, subdivision surface it could just be uh, polygonal uh, faceted polygons so right now obviously it's using um, subdivision surfaces, you know, Camel Clark or whichever one you're using. So if I just turn that off, um, that helps me. I know it doesn't look like it helped me here, but once I actually uh, make this cube a tiny bit smaller, it will help. Uh, now remember, when we made the cube, we actually made it in a way where if you move, if you scale it, it doesn't move from the point of uh, origin. And uh, what that means is that I need to scale it and then slightly bump it right and up just to compensate for that. Uh, I'm going to do this manually. Obviously, you can rig this kind of stuff to kind of get more refinement on it. But uh, in this case, I'm going to actually grab the cube here. And uh, I'm going to make this kind of 0 0.999 uh, and 0.999. So now it's obviously gotten rid of the problem at the top. Any problems on the right side, it didn't get rid of the problems on the bottom and the left if I had them. So what I'm going to do here is... I can either play around with the positions uh, or I can just go to the actual cube item 
here and just let's just say I'm gonna add 0 0.005 so half a millimeter and half a millimeter and uh, I can always go back to the procedural operations here and and do whatever I need to do to kind of merge the points a, a, in a procedural manner uh, but in this case I don't have I don't get as many of those issues um, when I'm playing with this and uh, that's pretty cool and obviously everything I have here is uh, still functional and it's pretty wicked what it can do um, additionally on top of that if you feel the UV map is stretched which in this case it is because it's a it's a toroid you're really stretching it uh, there's a couple of ways to deal with it you can either uh, disconnect the radius of the Y and kind of have it have its own um, just by going to the so I have a half height node here I can disconnect this and just wire it up to the radius Y I don't necessarily want to do that in this case uh, but I'd like to do is actually go to um, the toroid itself and based on action center origin in UV space I'm gonna uh, stretch it out 300 uh, percent and what that does is that it makes more room uh, for my hexagons I could also like I said squished my hexagons in UV uh, in uh, X space but I, I don't want to do that and you'll notice obviously now that 0 to 1 space doesn't get covered um, in this case and I'm going to actually grab it and update my uh, UV guide so I'm going to delete this UV guide grab my toroid texture convert UVs to mesh yes now you can see that if I look at my um, my purple uh, square it's really only covering a partial uh, portion of that toroid and I'm going to hide both of them we'll keep this one and uh, the, the easiest thing you can do is just grab this and uh, literally just extend it and as I extend it I'm going to hide that guide uh, as I extend this it actually is also extending it on the on the surface of the toroid which is great um, once I get to the final I'm done um, for this to be seamless right here you just have to have a specific multiple multiplier of the uh, scale that you're using and the radius that you're using so it just has to map out to the correct unit of repetition which is pretty straightforward mostly for the x direction it gets harder to match both x and y direction uh, without disconnecting them but that is basically it once you're happy with that uh, you know there's a lot of possibilities you can do here uh, a lot of funky things and we'll continue a few more uh, uh, tv uh, some, a few more videos or tv who's, who's watching tv these days but a few more videos to actually show you what you're capable of doing um, not on a toroid, but on additional uh, design meshes that make a ton of sense. This stuff can really be useful if you're doing things on um, shoes, apparel, eyewear, helmets, um, anything that has a UV map, even if it's just a knob, you're able to do this. I mean, imagine a mech that you want to have this kind of stuff on and do additional things to it. Um, this is a great start, and obviously you can encapsulate it as a preset and start using it there. But hopefully this was helpful to you, um, and I'll... Uh, save this out and share it with you guys and uh, have a good weekend and uh, talk to you next time ciao yum yum